Metro Cebu is the second largest metropolis of the Philippines, which now encompasses 13 local government units. In 2010, its population was about 2.5 million. However, projection of the roadmap study sees more than 5 million in 2050. The natural features of Metro Cebu reveal high hazard risks for landslide and flooding. Only 24% is suitable for urban development free from natural hazards. Like any fast-growing urban area, Metro Cebu is beset with its share of development issues, such as wastewater and solid waste management, flooding and insufficient water supply, and heavy traffic. To respond effectively to these challenges, the Metro Cebu Development and Coordinating Board MCDCB, in coordination with JICA, embarked on the formulation of a sustainable urban development vision for Metro Cebu 2050. It came up with development strategies of competitiveness, livability, mobility, and most importantly, the metropolitan management. To realize the Mega Cebu Vision 2050, this study crafted the following sub-roadmaps addressing seven critical issues. present urbanization trend of the metropolis is concentrated in the already densely populated core urban areas. This results in daily traffic congestion and hampers economic and social activities. The development pattern of a monocentric growth should be refashioned to a polycentric to accommodate 5 million people in 2050. An urban cluster system will be adopted to define urban function. The cities of Danao and Naga could be developed as growth poles next to the core areas. Well-appointed green buffer areas will ensure environmental safety nets for the metropolis. As such, a future spatial plan for the whole Metro Cebu was formulated in this roadmap study in coordination with the 13 LGUs of Metro Cebu. Due to limited road space and network, Average vehicle speed in the urban area remain very low. Additional roads are proposed to provide alternate routes for public and private transport. Bottleneck mitigation measures such as modification of intersections, grade separation, road widening, and introduction of area traffic control will be conducted. Likewise, the introduction of a mass transit system network is proposed in order to substantially improve mobility. This starts with the introduction of an Automated Guideway Transit AGT, airport line to connect Mactan Island and Cebu Island by early 2020s. Additionally, Mass Rapid Transit MRT lines with a combined length of 97 kilometers and approximately 50 stations connecting all the cities and municipalities of Metro Cebu will be operational in phases starting from 2030 to 2050. Metro Cebu will enjoy a steady economic growth, even in the long term. People's affluence levels, in terms of per capita GRDP, is projected to grow to more than 20,000 US dollars in 2050. Annual tourist arrivals breached the 2.5 million mark in 2013 and will continue to increase over the years. The Mega Cebu Investment Board will be established to promote four priority sectors. Special attention will be paid for regional branding as well as resources in different economic sectors. One of the challenging issues in Metro Cebu is the inadequacy and poor quality of its water supply. The current water supply will be unable to meet future demand of the metropolis. The over-extraction of underground water, a main water source for Cebu, already causes salt water intrusion into the aquifer, encroaching up to inland from Cebu City shore. Due to expanding demand and supply gap, construction of plural dams are essential requiring urgent consensus building. There are many flood-prone areas in Metro Cebu. An enormous amount of garbage and inappropriate structures along the riverbanks obstruct the flow of natural and man-made waterways. To analyze the problem thoroughly, a comprehensive study for Metro Cebu Integrated Flood and Drainage System Master Plan will be formulated along with clearing of rivers and constructing small-scale rainwater storage facilities. Surprisingly, Metro Cebu does not have a proper public wastewater management system. 
fecal coliform that exceeds acceptable standards was detected at the rivers and sea. Without endangering human health or the natural environment, human and industrial wastes need to be disposed properly. Construction of a septage treatment plant by cluster is a matter of the greatest urgency. Unorganized dump sites are seen in Metro Cebu. A comprehensive solid waste management master plan for Metro Cebu will be required to formulate strategic policy and plan. Moreover, the Waste Reduction and Recovery Program needs strict adherence and follow-through. The South Road property, SRP, is a 300-hectare reclamation area. The development concept of SRP is to become an IT-concentrated industry zone for Metro Cebu, but predominantly holds residential and commercial areas. A unified management system of energy supply and demand in SRP is promoted to realize a smart SRP. To implement the metropolis-wide projects outlined by these roadmaps, an institutional body to handle metropolitan affairs is necessary. That body will consist of not only LGUs, but also the private sector and civil society organizations, referred to as the Metro Cebu model. As a first step for institutional development process, MCDCB will be strengthened to coordinate several types of feasibility studies, arrange project finance, and enhance planning capacity. This institutional body will be developed with enhanced governance function. Metro Cebu Roadmap consists of seven sub-roadmaps. Based on implementation perspective, 14 anchor programs are selected as high-priority roadmap projects. With these programs, Metro Cebu will take their first step toward Mega Cebu Vision 2050. We welcome all our valuable partners to realize these roadmaps. Together, let us make big waves for the Mega Cebu Vision 2050. Mega Cebu, making waves.